Hello everybody, my name is Doomfish, and in today's episode of the Redstone Toolbox, I'll be showing you everything there is to know about pistons and sticky pistons in Minecraft. These are probably one of the most well-recognized redstone components in the entire game, and their function is pretty simple. They push blocks, and the sticky piston can push and pull blocks, but there is a lot more to them than just those two things, and I'll be getting into that right away. So as always, the first thing I'm going to be showing you guys is how you can make a piston in the crafting menu, and all it takes is your three planks of wood, of any kind of wood, on the top row of the crafting bar, and then go ahead and place down two blocks of cobblestone on the left, two on the right, so we get this shape right here, place down iron in the middle, and redstone on the bottom here, and we get our piston, like so. Now if you want to turn it into a sticky piston, all you need is your normal piston in the crafting bar, and you place your slime ball above it, there you go, there's your sticky piston. Like I said in the beginning of the video, Pistons can push blocks, and sticky pistons can push and pull blocks. So on the left here, I've got a normal piston. We can press this button and see that this normal block is pushed. And on the right side, with a sticky piston, we'll see the block is pushed, and then again pulled back. Now there are a lot of restrictions, especially in the Java edition, for what blocks can be pulled and which ones cannot. The most common example is chests, so if we go ahead and place this down, grab ourselves a chest from the bar here, and try and do the same thing we just did, we'll see that nothing at all happens. Now this is actually not true in the Bedrock Edition, so any container can actually be pushed in the Bedrock Edition. Now there's tons and tons of other exceptions, like some things break when you try and push them with the piston, some things don't work at all like this, um, and I'll link a article in the wiki for the piston that'll show you every single block that cannot be pushed normally, like our quartz block over there can. Also, pistons have a push limit, so they can only push up to 12 blocks in a row like so. So here I've got 12 blocks, and we'll see that it should be able to push just fine. All these blocks get pushed across, but with the other piston that has 13 blocks in front of it, we'll see that nothing happens when I push this button, because this piston cannot extend that many blocks. The piston does not extend immediately, as you probably noticed, but instead it takes around two ticks of time to fully extend, so we can see this by having a sticky piston with a lever on top, pushing a redstone block into a redstone line over here. Now when we flick the lever, it does not instantly turn on, we have to wait that 0.2 seconds for that to happen. However, at least on the Java edition of the game, the retraction is instantaneous, so the moment I flick this lever, the redstone line will go ahead and turn off. However, even though it's instantaneous, it still does take one tick to fully complete its retraction, but any block that is placed right here, so for example, turn it on, any block, this redstone block, when we go ahead and retract the piston, immediately considers that this spot is empty, and the redstone block is no longer there, as soon as we flick the lever. We can actually use this mechanic to create what's called an instant wire, or a zero tick repeater, where we actually have a repeater here that we can extend forever so we can continue this line on, and at least when the wire turns off, it'll happen instantaneously. So just like earlier, it does take time when we flick this lever, or this signal to get carried over down to the end of the line there, but when we go ahead and flick this lever off, we'll see that this whole thing turns off immediately. So a better way to look at it is if you just think about both of these pistons right here, they'll both be turning off at the exact same time. So just to show this a little bit better, I've gone ahead and extended this line with each of these repeater setups once every 15 blocks, and it basically just loops around here. So go ahead and first flick on the lever, we'll see that it takes some time for this pulse to reach this other piston, but when we flick off the lever, it will happen completely instantaneously. So this is a very very simple way to have an instantaneous wire, and there's other ways to do it, but this just uses the piston mechanics and the instantaneous retraction of these sticky pistons. Also, sticky pistons don't really do anything unless they've been fully retracted. So here I've got a little setup where we can push this block back and forth with some normal pistons, as well as a sticky piston right here that I can go ahead and flick this lever on and extend it. Now when I pass this block back and forth in front of the face of the sticky piston, we'll see that nothing really happens, this doesn't prevent the block from being pulled by these other pistons, it just sort of sits here and takes up two blocks of space. But if we go ahead and retract this when the piston is sort of extended and this block is in front of its face, we'll see that it works just like you'd expect it to. So this restriction also sort of applies with stuff like gravity blocks, for example gravel. This won't actually prevent the gravel from being stuck, it'll just keep on falling, it doesn't stick to the side of this, like you might expect intuitively, and the same is true when it extends, it won't actually do anything to that gravity block. Slime and honey blocks also have some unique properties when they're being pushed by pistons. So for example, we can place down some blocks to the side of each of these, and we'll see that not only does the block directly in front of the piston extend, but the blocks sort of stuck to the side will also extend. 
Now this still sort of applies with the whole 12 block push limit thing. So if we go ahead and place down five more of these blocks and then five more of these, we'll be at 10 block or at 12 blocks rather. So this is a complete max that we can push. Despite the fact that there's only six slime blocks directly in front of this, we can't push any more blocks here. So we can place down one more block either on this side or on this side. I'll just show on the left first. We'll see that it can extend. And the same, of course, is true if we place it on this side. We'll see that the piston cannot extend. This is also true for other blocks of honey. And as long as you don't have any immovable blocks here, you should work just fine. So we'll see that this can push sort of to the side all the way out. We could extend it as long as we're not pushing more than 12 blocks. And we'll see that it still works. Now an interesting mechanic of this is even though slime and honey blocks can be pushed by pistons, as we can see, the slime and the honey don't actually stick together like this. So we'll see that maybe you would think, oh, well, this is a sticky block. This can just be sort of treated as a normal block. These two should stick together, but they actually don't. And so there's a lot of unique things we can do. We can stick slime block flying machines and honey block flying machines side by side, and we can set up a lot of neat things there. And I'll link in the description to my other flying machine tutorial. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, that'll give you a basic overview of flying machines. Now on the more technical side, a sticky piston or a normal piston is not actually a solid block. Even though it totally looks like one, we can't pass our redstone signal through it. So by doing this, I've just gone ahead and placed down a repeater facing into this. And to avoid it from being powered, I've just put a block of obsidian, which is a immovable object, in front of the face. And we'll see that, unlike you might expect, this cannot actually carry a charge through it. So this is not a transparent block right here. Now there are a lot of different ways you can power pistons. Of course, we can just lead a redstone line into it. We can have a repeater facing into it. We can have a repeater facing into a block that is powered. We can go ahead and have a piece of redstone pointing into a block and power that. Now, if we have something like this, where the redstone dust is near the side of the piston, but it's not actually pointing into it, we'll see the piston will not fire. Also, if you have one pointing sort of to the side and we put some redstone dust on top, or any other like block, like some rails for example, um, we can see that the redstone dust gets broken. However, if we have a, sticky, a piston facing down, and I believe this was just added in the 1.16 update, we'll see that this redstone dust does not actually get broken. So you can lay your redstone dust on top of pistons or sticky pistons as long as they're facing downwards. Now the applications of the piston and the sticky piston are pretty massive. Anytime you want to move a block, like we can think of sort of the classic little piston door set up here, where this is closed, and we click the lever and have it turned on. And anytime you want to have like a flying machine, you'll need your sticky pistons. And there's also plenty of other applications in sort of like, for example, this redstone clock right here. Utilize the sticky pistons pushing a redstone block. There are just tons and tons of different applications for the pistons, and some of them are more obvious, while some are a little bit less obvious, but there's so much stuff that I can barely even talk about it all. So that pretty much covers everything over the piston and the sticky piston, and we can just go ahead and recap some of the things we talked about today. So for example, our sticky piston can go ahead and push and pull blocks, while our normal piston can just push the blocks and they can't retract it. And pistons have a delay when they're pushing the block, but they actually don't have a delay when the block is sort of technically considered to be pulled. So we can go ahead and retract this and we'll see we have an instant wire circuit here. Also, sticky pistons and normal pistons can push slime blocks and honey blocks, but pretty much all the same rules apply to those. And as well as some of the blocks are movable, and slime blocks and honey blocks don't actually mesh together. Also, our sticky piston and normal piston are still considered transparent blocks, even though they might look like full blocks when they're retracted they're actually still considered transparent. And there's a lot of different ways you can both power pistons and sticky pistons, and there's so many applications that I can't even begin to think all, all of them. So that is going to do it for today's episode of the Redstone Toolbox. I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, don't be afraid to leave a like, and you can subscribe for more content just like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.